So, so I want to talk a little bit about what a, a model replicator uh, should write about in order to show that they've successfully replicated and to provide evidence of that, right? Um, so one thing they need to think about is the category of the replication standard, right? Which we talk, we just finished talking about numerical identity, distributional equivalence, and relational alignment. They should also identify the focal measures, right? What are the measures that they're going to use to show that they've replicated the original results, right? Um, are, are they gonna use, for instance, in the diffusion model, are they gonna use the, frac the, the diffusion curve over time, right? Um, and in order to communicate replication to someone else, it is important to talk about how much contact the model replicators had with the model authors. And the reason why is because that might indicate that there's some content that was not in the original published version of the model, for instance, right? So do they have no contact, they have brief email contact, they have you know, rich discussion and personal meetings to discuss it, right? Um, the model replicator should also talk about how familiar are they with, with the original language in order to provide someone else who's looking at the replication some idea of what the, um, what, how sophisticated the replication is. Um, did the model replicator examine the original source code, right? If they did, right, then that might indicate that their, that their replication is slightly biased or is slightly influenced by some of those um, ideas, right? Um, did they actually have the ability to run the original model or were they just looking at the results that they had, right? Um, and how much did they explore the parameter space above and beyond what was presented in the original paper or the original model description, right? Now, in each of these cases, what I'm suggesting is that someone who is replicating a model, when communicating that replication to someone else, should lay this out because these different aspects give uh, the rest of the audience, the rest of the scientific world, the rest of the managerial audience, some knowledge about um, how detailed the interactions were and how much knowledge you need to have about the original model in order to uh, do the replication, right? Um, and there's not a correct answer to any of these, right, necessarily. Um, of course, the, the less knowledge that the replicator has about the original model uh, beyond, uh, you know, above and beyond what's in uh, the, the original publication, the more likely it is that the model is easy to replicate in many ways. Now, in order to make that possible, so the model replicators are able to actually successfully replicate models based only upon the original uh, paper, it's important for model authors to do things like provide detailed descriptions of the conceptual model, specify details of the model, right? Like order of events, random versus non-random activation, right? Did, was, were individuals sorted and then activated? Were the turtles, you know, the, the turtles activate by having the one who had uh, the least probability of adopting the, 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 the product go first, right? Um, did they, um, who designed the model, who implemented the model, were they the original people, how should you contact them, right? Were, what, what's the availability of the model? Is it, is it just what's in the paper? Is there binary, uh, binary compiled code available? Is there a source code, right? And finally, you know, model authors should think about even publishing sensitivity analysis to show things besides their main points in the paper in order to give model replicators more data to try and understand what was going on with the model, right? So once all this has been done, right, then you've successfully completed a replication, right? You now have a replicated model. And, the repli and there's a benefit both to the original model developer, right, in having their, their scientific knowledge shown to be correct to some extent, but there's also a benefit to the replicator because the replicator gains new insights into that model, right? Um, it increases a shared understanding that we as a community have about the way those models work. It also improves both the verification of the model because it's potentially they could find out there are bugs or, or mistakes in the original model uh, that could be done differently. And has potential to improve validation, right? Replicators are, you know, by, by definition, unless you're naively replicating a model or, you know, blindly replicating a model, they're forced to consider the differences between the model and the real world, which influences the, the validation of the model. So replication is a very important process. It's something that I feel should be incentivized to happen more often. Um, and um, yeah, and I highly recommend that if you get a chance, pull one of your favorite papers and try and replicate that model.